Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. In this video, I'm talking about nitrites. What are they? How do you test for them? Are they something to worry about? And what can we do to keep them in check? In previous videos, I've covered pH, ammonia, oxygen, and stressed the importance of water testing. Do check out those videos, all full of very important information that every pond keeper should know. I have mentioned nitrites before, but this will be my first video that goes into detail. Don't worry, we're not going to be getting technical, that's not my thing. I just want to make videos that explain things in simple, everyday terms that will make sense to the average pond keeper. First off, a disclaimer. My video is specifically aimed at pond keepers. Certain sensitive tropical or marine fish might react differently to nitrite and you must take this into account. In a pond, fish excrete ammonia, a toxic compound that if it becomes concentrated will cause serious damage to the fish. Fortunately, nature has provided us with a solution to the problem and it is called the nitrogen cycle. Aerobic bacteria break down the ammonia and create nitrites. The nitrites are then broken down by different bacteria to form nitrates. Then plants take up the nitrates or anaerobic bacteria break them down. This is the nitrogen cycle. In a mature pond, these processes are taking place in your pond's filter and keeping the water fit and healthy for the fish to live in. Now nitrite is not nearly as toxic to your average pond fish as ammonia, but in very high concentrations or when the fish are exposed to it for long periods of time, then there are some definite health concerns. Doing a nitrite test gives you a good indication of the general state of your pond and filter. It gives you a chance to spot a problem developing and resolve it before it becomes serious. Testing for nitrite is very simple and cheap to do with a basic test kit. You should test for nitrite at least fortnightly. With the Tetra NO2 test kit, you use a test tube and place 5 milliliters of water into the tube. Then you add 7 drops of reagent number 1. Shake the tube. Then add 7 drops of reagent number 2. Shake the tube again. To check your results, you just need to hold the test tube next to the test card and compare the colours. If there is little or no nitrite, then it will be yellow in colour. If there is a small or moderate amount of nitrite, then the colour will be more of an orange. If there is a large amount, then it will turn red. So if we have tested for nitrite, and we have found that it is very low or non-existent, then we do not need to take any action, other than to test for it again in the future. But what if it is moderate or high? What do we do then? The first thing is, do not panic. Don't worry unduly. To understand nitrite in a useful, meaningful capacity, we need to explore a few different scenarios and depending on the scenario, the action that we take, if any, may differ. In a new pond, you are going to get some nitrite. During the first few weeks, bacteria will be establishing and multiplying in your filter. In fact, it can take many weeks, sometimes months, for the nitrite removing bacteria to reach sufficient levels to break down the nitrites effectively. So it is perfectly normal to test and find the nitrite. In this scenario, I would not introduce any new fish. Reduce feeding to a small amount, but do not cease feeding entirely, especially if you have small fish or fry. They need food, and if you stop feeding entirely, they're going to become undernourished very quickly. Carry out some additional small to moderate sized water changes 
This will help to dilute the nitrite and stop it becoming very high. You might also want to consider adding some salt to the water. High nitrite can interfere with oxygen uptake into the blood. For more information about salt, I did a video, Salt Not In My Pond, so do check that out for some more information about salt. Retest the nitrites in a few weeks and usually you have found that they have gone away. So that's all well and good in a new pond. But what if you get nitrite in an established system? Now there are a number of reasons why this could happen. You might have used a treatment such as an antibacterial or parasite treatment that has temporarily affected the biomass. The remedy for this is exactly the same as before. Water change, sensible feeding and usually the filter will recover quickly. The nitrite will be gone the next time that you test. Another possible reason is that water flow to the filter has been interrupted or reduced. Did you have a power cut? Is your pump locked up? Restore and maintain water flow and the filter will break down the nitrites and you will be back on track. Sometimes the filter can be serviced in a destructive way. This means that the biomass is being damaged and not being able to multiply quickly enough. Filter media, sponges and brushes should be rinsed with pond water, not blasted with a pressure washer or cleaned with detergents. Don't ever leave them out to dry in the sun either, it's important to keep them moist. Other reasons for the nitrite could include pH being too low, excessive feeding, sudden rise in water temperature, the list is long. But in an established pond, if nitrite becomes an ongoing issue, then it's highly likely that the pond is overstocked, underfiltered, or more likely both. A large filter system will support a stable biomass and not require constant attention. A filter that is too small will require excessive amounts of maintenance and as the fish grow in numbers and volume the problem will only get worse. I hope that you found this video interesting. Please subscribe to the channel, post some comments and give the video a thumbs up. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.